Welcome back to the channel. We just finished with WWDC 2022. I'm going to give you all of the iOS highlights in 10 minutes or less. Set timer, go. The first update for iOS 16 is customizable lock screens. This is very reminiscent of the Apple Watch faces where you guys know that you can swipe through multiple screens, customize the color, the fonts that are used, the pictures, the widgets that you have on there that is now going to be brought to iOS devices. With customizable lock screens now also comes a customizable focus. You can now use your different focuses paired with your customizable lock screen. So if you have a lock screen and focus set for school, for work, for personal, you can just swipe between them for the time of day and then it will customize your widgets or whatever you have on your lock screen per whatever focus that you're on. Live notifications is another feature that you're going to be able to see on your lock screen and this is most beneficial I think to anyone who watches sports games lives and gets those notifications coming in repetitively. You can kind of get them all come in together at one time while the game is live or whatever it is that you're watching and then when it stops you can have them all disappear or choose how you want to customize that in settings later. The next update for iOS 16 is for messages. You are now going Going to be able to edit or undo any message that is sent. I'm going to be able to mark threads as unread. I don't know how many times I've opened up messages that I haven't quite been ready to respond to yet and then I just don't get back to the person or the group message, whatever's going on. And so it'll be nice kind of like emails where I can just mark something as unread and go back to it later. SharePlay is now also being brought over to messages whereas before it was only able to be used on FaceTime. The third iOS feature that is being updated is the Apple Wallet. Now you're going to be able to add more ID cards to your Apple wallet. Again, this is a feature right now that is only being, I want to say tested out in the States. I don't know if any other countries have adopted this yet. And even within the States, I think there's only about 13 of them right now that are accepting these IDs in various forms and for various different reasons. And select TSA checkpoints are now also accepting these IDs as well. We'll see how that plays out in the coming years though. Keys within the Apple wallet is also receiving an update. Keys, as some of you may know, were used for home, for office, for cars and hotels. Previously, you were only able Able to use these within your own Apple wallet. You are now able to share these with other people and add it to their wallet as well. Apple is looking to integrate with Android devices as well. So there will be some crossover there, which is nice. The last feature for the wallet is Apple Pay The last two features of the Apple wallet have to do with a buy now, pay later type of financing and tracking for merchants. So the first one with the buy now, pay later, Apple has called this Apple pay later, where you can purchase an item with anyone who accepts Apple pay and pay in four installments over a six week period of time, where you'll receive periodic updates within your Apple wallet. Again, I'm not a big fan with buy now, pay later type of financing, but that is an option there for you if that's what you use. The Apple pay order tracking is now also available for merchants to give out updates on their products for anyone who have purchased things through Apple Pay to be delivered to you similar to any other delivery service carrier. The fourth iOS feature that is being updated is Apple Maps. Apple Maps is something I feel like they have been updating for many, many, many years. And if I'm being completely honest, it is definitely not my go-to app when I'm using to get directions to go somewhere, or if I have an actual destination to get to in a timely manner, I am not using Apple Maps. They're now adding in multi-stop routing where you can add up to 15 stops in your trip and you can add that in with Siri as well as you're driving if you choose. You can now also view the balance and add funds to your transit cards. And if you are using public transit, Apple is now supposed to be giving you the public transit fares cost that you would be paying per whatever trip that it is that you're taking. Again, I feel like there's other apps that just do this a little bit better and are specifically geared towards transit. Apple is trying here, so we'll throw them a bone. The fifth update that's coming to iOS 16 is Apple Family or Apple Sharing. I have personally had recent experience with this, uh, providing my daughter with an Apple ID and setting up an iPad with her instead of having things crossed and shared and it was a whole mess. So I truly did not enjoy the setup experience of having to set up an Apple ID for my child and having to put all the parental controls on and all of that. So Apple's new update is that apparently this is supposed to be a lot more easier than it was. You're going to be able to set up new devices for your child or family with Quick Start and you'll just be able to get through things with a few taps. They're also going to be putting in better age appropriate restrictions for books, music, and apps. I also found this to be a little bit of a weird situation. Um, I had an example with my daughter the other day. She tried to download Amazon, which is technically in the app store as a four plus age app, but you know, 
I'm not giving her access to that. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what type of age appropriate restrictions are going to be rolled out with that. If any of you watching have children and would like more detail on the experience with Apple family sharing, then give a thumbs up to this video and I will create one later on. Screen time requests are also now going to be able to be responded to within the messages app, as opposed to a little notification, I guess being popped up on the screen. I'm not sure if they're taking away the notification or it's just going to messages or if it's going to be both. Either way, I didn't mind the old system where it was just a notification pop up and it was a quick accept, decline or allow for so many minutes. The last update that will be coming to the Apple family sharing is to be able to update the settings for the child as they get older. A new feature called safety check is also going to be rolled out with iOS 16 later this fall. This feature was specifically developed for those that are in abusive relationships who might be sharing passwords and devices with their abuser and for those who are trying to leave this abusive relationship. The idea is that you're going to be able to lock everything off, sign out of iCloud on all other devices, lock messages and everything else, turn off location settings. So the person who you might've been sharing all this information with does not have access to that information and therefore hopefully does not have access to you, uh, the person trying to leave the relationship. I think it's great that Apple is releasing a feature like this and I can't wait to see the stats on how many people it has helped later in the fall when it is released. The seventh feature that is being rolled out with iOS 16 is for HomeKit. Now HomeKit can use some updates. It's not the most user-friendly app, especially for a native Apple app, and it could definitely stand for some redesigning of the interface, which is exactly what they're doing. They are also going to be bringing it to iPhone, iPad, and Mac, which is great. I've only ever had it on the iOS devices, so for it to be brought over to Mac OS is great, and I can't wait to see those updates in the fall. The main thing that they're bringing out in HomeKit is something called Matter, and this is going to enable you to use smart devices seamlessly across multiple platforms. It's supposed to be simple to use and easy to set up, so we'll see how that rolls out in the fall. The last feature for iOS 16 that is going to be rolled out is for CarPlay. Now CarPlay is used for multiple different makes and models of cars around the world. I think the one thing that you're going to find right now with CarPlay is that depending on the make and model of your car, you might get a different user experience. It's still familiar to your native Apple look, but maybe how it's integrated will look different car to car. What they're going to be doing now is having CarPlay integrate better with your vehicle specifically. That way you're able to maybe control your temperature or the radio rate right from the CarPlay app itself. So you're not going in and out of settings while you're driving and being more distracted. Widgets are also now going to be included and you can get more of a condensed screen and look onto your dashboard if you have a screen on your dashboard where you're also going to be able to customize that screen a little bit better with different themes and styles. So we will look forward to that in the fall. With that being said, I'm going to, whoo Oh man, battery just died as I was saying my last sentence. That was great. Okay, um, I'm not sure how I did for time. The timer will show here, but that is all for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. I have more coming out on the WWDC specific for the health app that has been a little bit updated. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one. Oh.